Focus now to Nigeria and Boko Haram is expected to top the agenda over the next three days at the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. The militants have killed hundreds of people, if not thousands, displaced thousands of others and destroyed villages and towns in northeastern Nigeria. The South African government, meanwhile, has warned that all South Africans who are illegally engaged in military operations in Nigeria will be arrested. Newspapers have reported that some former South African soldiers are now training Nigerian troops to fight Boko Haram. Nigerian concerns have reached fever pitch as January draws to a close. Issues of violence and money are as expected, fueling some of these discussions. Elections in Nigeria have often been marred by violence. Now, taking a more in-depth look at the, the significance of the upcoming elections on February 14 and the impact it's having is Hamid Abubakar who's the Director of Strategy and Communications Consultancy, Africa Practice. He's live in Cape Town. A good morning to you, Amid. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Evan. How are you? A very good thank you today. I'm a bit worried about what's going in Nigeria. Elections are around the corner. Are we going to see more bloodshed in the next couple of weeks? Um, Eben, we've been in a state of um, a state of insecurity for a while now, for uh, you know just over four years or so since the previous administration, actually the late Yardua administration. Um, and traditionally, we have seen a buildup of violence as elections comes uh, comes closer, um, with it reaching a peak usually around the announcement of uh, electro uh, the electoral results. So um, I'm afraid that, um, you know, people are, of course, you know, being very cautious, but uh, people are also hoping for as peaceful uh, an election as possible. The elections take place on February 14th. We will have to see how things go between now and then. We've seen a lot of violence in the, in the run-up to now and probably see a little bit more. Do you think it's a, a safe enough environment for elections to go ahead? There have been calls for the elections to be postponed. Yes, there have been um, renewed calls for the elections to be postponed for two reasons, uh, primarily. The primary reason actually being that um, not uh, just about 38.7 million people have collected their voters' cards. Um, we're running a new system, uh, an electronic system this year, um, and that leaves about 30 million people who haven't actually collected their cards. So there's, um, there's a bit of tension because they, people feel that um, half, just over half the electorate has actually collected their cards. The second thing is the issue of insecurity in the northeast uh, states of the country, where we're actually looking at about a million people displaced and so not being able to vote in their, um, their hometowns. And uh, we're waiting for the National Assembly to pass a bill that will allow internally displaced people to actually vote. Security is going to make the electoral process um, very tricky for ordinary Nigerians and for the INEC, the independent body charged with administering elections. Mm -hmm. But uh, INEC has repeatedly iterated that it has no plans of postponing the elections. And I think that there's an issue of credibility there. Uh, being seen to postpone the elections might be um, interpreted as um, you know, an independent party perhaps playing to um, you know, one of the parties, in particular, perhaps the, um, you know, the, the ruling party, the PDP, the People's Democratic Party. I want to talk about the background of what is going on in Nigeria, and then will this election have particular significance if it goes ahead this year? Yes, I think that's, um, that's a point that um, all analysts globally that are covering the elections agree. Um, but I think that sometimes it's, um, you know, people forget that, A, um, the type of tension that we're seeing and the fact that there's um, you know, perhaps a viable opposition uh, for the first time in recent, uh, since Nigeria's return to, you know, to democracy suggests that this is actually a democratic process working, um, which is a positive thing. Um, and um, I think that um, you know, th these elections are going to be hotly contested. Um, the APC has, that's the opposition party, has a genuine chance of actually unseating the People's Democratic Party, which is currently led by President Goodluck Jonathan. Um, however, it is likely that um, the power of incumbency shall see the PDP retain um, its position, at least at the presidential level, but perhaps losing certain key states or regions to the opposition. So what we're seeing is a lot more vibrancy in terms of the elections and 
perhaps a situation where um, you know Nigerians can you know come out and actually you know lay claim to the mandate in a democratic process and remind those that are being elected that um, they do actually work for the people. So I am trying to be upbeat about the elections and you know the potential impact. That said. Um, regardless of who wins, chances are there will be a heightened level of um, instability and insecurity for the short term. But either way, I believe Nigeria is going to come out of this with a stronger uh, democratic process in play. Hamid, thank you very much for that contribution. You have a very good outlook. So the whole of the continent hopes that you are right with this positive outlook that you have ahead of the 14, February 14 election. Thank you for joining us and giving us that unique insight. That is the Director of Strategy and Communications Consultancy Africa Practice. His name is Hamid Abubakar, and he spoke to us about, well, political stability or instability ahead of elections in Nigeria. Let's quickly have a look.